Hi, my name is Dr. Rich Miller and I'm the fish vet. Today we're in Bali and a couple of my colleagues have invited me on a tour around some of the fish shops around this region. Uh, the What you can see in the background here is Pasa Satria in Jalan Veteran in Denpasar region. We're here, we're visiting some shops to check out what fish they have for sale in Bali. With no import restrictions, you can pretty much buy anything you want here. One thing you'll notice with these fish tanks, they are individually filtered, which means that diseases shouldn't spread from one tank to another, provided you're using a different net. Look at these cute little birchers. They're actually fairly primitive in the evolutionary scale, and they have what I find really interesting is that they have primitive lungs, allowing them to breathe atmospheric air. Here's an Asian arowana. They're my favorite fish because I really love their big scales. They look like medieval armor and the way they just glide gracefully through the water and their real mean look to them. It's actually a Cites listed and endangered in the wild, but they're bred in thousands in fish farms. They're actually individually microchipped uh, to supply the aquarium trade. It also gulps air and requires access to the water surface to be able to breathe. Here's a selectively bred gold form of the South American silver arowana. These here are tilapia, normally farmed as a table fish for eating. But these fish have been selectively bred to have long fins for the ornamental trade. So I'm just having a look at some of the shops here um, and you can get all sorts of um, medicines here and in fact the shopkeeper said that a lot of Australians actually come to Bali to purchase medicines for their fish and some of the ones that I've seen here are some that are scheduled for and um, normally requires veterinary prescription uh, in Australia um, things like especially this one here this is um, enrofloxacin uh, which you can get in liquid form to dose your aquarium and fish tanks and then there's something else called L Bio from looks like it's from a Japanese product but nobody really knows what's in it and then there's another one that says biotic extra so I'm suspecting it's some sort of an antibiotic but it doesn't actually label what's in it I would suspect it's probably from the tetracycline of some sort Check out the fangs mm -hmm. in this Payara because of these they're also known as a vampire fish can you see the parasite it's carrying? Post a comment below if you know what it is. Later in this video, I'll show you and talk a bit more about it. From right to left, uh, the short body Texas high demand in Asia. The high fin loach, unsuitable for most aquariums, growing to over 4 feet in less than 5 years, followed by the front toza. This shop also sells turtles. In the top right is a Chinese pond turtle, followed by in the foreground a Mississippi map turtle. In the next tray is the Malayan box turtle, and on the floor is the African spurred tortoise. These odd looking fish, because of their shape, they're known as the knife fish. They're also known as the feather fin. You notice the anal fin is elongated and fuses with the caudal fin or the tail fin. The wave-like motion of the anal fin, together with its tail fin, allows them to swim forwards as well as backwards. Not many fish can swim backwards. Okay, so my friends have taken me here to eat some babi guling, which is a special traditional peak. Uh, so we've got our crispy skin, some sort of meat, blood, the babi guling, the herbs and spices, and sausage. Here we are at a different location now at Pasar Sangla Burung, Pasar Burung Sangla, Pasar Burung Sangla, uh, where it's a bird market basically uh, around the periphery. And right in the center, there's a strip that's just got all aquarium fishes. You may notice here again um, in Asia. A lot of uh, fish shops they tend to be fairly crowded in terms of stocking density. Um, you can see the filter size here isn't really adequate for that size tank. Uh, what they normally do as a, a routine is that they 
perform 100% water changes every couple of days or whenever the water looks a bit murky and then replace the water. So uh, this filter here is mainly acting as a bit of a biological filter but mainly as a mechanical filter. Here is a tank full of Trevally. The juveniles can be found in low salinity waters in lakes and rivers but as they get older and mature they move out to sea. Now back to the video of our Pyra that had something wrong with it. If you said anchorworm, you are correct. If you look closely at the nostrils, you can see a couple of these anchorworm parasites attached. The branching parts are the egg sacs. These are not actually worms, they're a copepod parasite and we'll cover the treatment of anchorworm in a future video. Check out the brilliant colours and varieties of koi in these ponds. These guys have been directly imported from Japan. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe and share our videos. And have a fantastic day. Hi, my name is Dr. Richard Lerk and I'm the Nation Dead. Today, I <laughs> just do that hand. <laughs>
Ashley. Here we go back. Not too far, Ashley. Mmm. That's a crackling. That's a tongue. Lung. Shakir. 